Hey, so on this episode, I had the pleasure of talking to Mr. Barkley. Uh, James is a fantastic guy. Um, he's got a huge passion for the countryside and uh, field sports, but mostly mostly um, is the hunting side. And that's what I wanted to talk to him about, his views and and his life with the uh, hunting. Um, so check it out. He's a nice guy. He's got some fantastic stories. Um, if you want to check out some more, um, you can look at this is hunting UK, uh, dot org on the internet or Facebook, this is hunting UK, or um, if that doesn't float your goat, there's um, inspirational wildlife photos, um, which he does as well, which is a little bit more uh, geared up just to the photography side of things. Um, check it out. I don't think you'll be uh, disappointed in any way, shape or form. So, I hope you enjoy. Have you, have you been in, involved with hunting all your life then? Oh, yeah. yeah. Good Lord. And, uh, my father, grandfather, great-grandfather, and... Uh, goes back to 1870. Really? Yeah. yeah. But uh, I did a little bit on Facebook about my father. Um, yes, I saw. And you know he would have been 101 on uh, Friday, and uh, sat so, 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 so. and uh, it was absolutely wonderful to see what people wrote about him. And you know it was very rewarding. And so he he was a master of the Puckridge Hounds for 55 seasons. My grandfather, sorry, my mother was master with him for ten, and then she died. And then my grandfather was master for fifty-two seasons. Uh, with and as part of that was with my father, and then my great grandfather was master for fifty seasons as well. And there was one season when they were all masters together, the really? three of them. Yeah. So and then my great grandfather had a pack of harriers down near Royden in L- near London. What, what is virtually London there? From about 1870 to about 1896, and then uh, it all, he, they were at the Buckley from there on. I'm the only one really who's taken masterships elsewhere. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, I did. What did I do? Um, four seasons at the Essex and Suffolk. 12 at the Fitzwilliam, 3 at the Cotsmoor, when Lucy had her accident, so that mucked that one up, so we stayed there. And we left there. Season at the South World, and then we went to the, Gre- I had a, two seasons at the Grove and Rufford, but as I say, after Lucy's accident, it was never the same again, we couldn't really. Makes life hard. Yeah. So, anyway, it's been a challenge. And an where's, where's the best place you work? Enjoy, most enjoyable, not the best, the most enjoyable. Well, place. I think the Fitzwilliam was a very, very interesting place because it was, although it was run by, although the, the, the Fitzwilliam family, the, the aristocracy, they owned the hounds and everything else, um, it was a wonderful community of all different types of people from all different backgrounds. Um, you know, the um, are you recording me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you? Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, the um, Huge cross section of people, huge cross section of people, absolutely fascinating. Um, you know, from the old boys who, um, you know, worked in Peterborough on the dust carts to, you know, the aristocracy, them, aristocracy themselves, you know, Lady, Fitz, Lady Hastings, uh, Sir Stephen Hastings, former Conservative MP. Um, you know, it was, it, class wasn't an issue. And I can remember one particular day which absolutely made that really clear was when um, um, we'd had the hand parade at the East of England show and George Adams Huntsman brought the hands out of the ring and we were given a meet at um, the Transport and General Workers Union stand. And all the union officials for, uh, for the area were there, and they gave us all the drink and looked after us. 
Now that would have been the first and the last time that ever happened anywhere in the country. Really? Um, and, you know, my joint masters were there who were, you know, aristocracy. He was conservative MP, former conservative MP. And now they were, we all were being looked after by the, you know, the unions. So that was, that was one of the most, the highlights of my career in that it uh, told me what hunting was all about. It was important to uh, get that, um, get that uh, cross-section right. Yeah. I, I, I discovered, I was, obviously, all through my, my life I've been involved with shooting hunting yeah. a lot. More, not, not so much the hunting early on. It wasn't until I went, moved away from East Anglia yeah. that I learned what foxhounds were and terriers yeah. were. It was actually, it was the lurchers, the terriers, then the foxhounds for yeah. me. Yeah. And I'd done my work, school work experience mm. at a bird reserve. Right. And now you'd think bird reserve, you think, you know, ring in, yeah. you know, sort and cover out for species of birds, you yeah. know, habit, mm. habitat management, that sort of thing. One of the things that surprised me was the first thing they had me do, especially when they worked out, they knew, found out what I really was and what yeah. to be a gamekeeper, was I had to make larsen cages to catch magpies. Mm. And then from that, I had to catch stoats. Yeah. And that's when I discovered that actually we all fit together here yeah. and, and this is how it works. And we do, um, and, and there's no, no doubt about it. And I, but I think that, uh, that the worry is at the moment, and the, the huge worry is that... Uh, you know, the, um, the, there is a, a, a drive to get rid of all of it, you know, whether it be hunting, shooting, fishing, yeah. whatever, you know, it's getting, and it's getting very, very nasty. Yeah. And, uh, okay, um, hunting is probably um, the one that, okay, has went through all the rigmarole of the legislation and all that, however many years ago it was. Um, um, if we'd all stuck together then and showed a real determined... Yeah, united ...united attitude, we, they probably wouldn't be playing about with it now. But no. uh, we didn't, and we, we, you know, it was so sad to see that, you know, OK, shoots and shooting people went on the march, but the uh, big organisations that represent us weren't prepared to get got, together. Got very slopey shouldered and yeah. didn't want any part of it. Yeah. No. So, you know, individuals and that made sure they went. But no, it's, um, it, it's, it's it was very, very sad to see. But we've got, we've got to come back and we've got to fight this one and we've got to bring the younger generation with us all the way. And I think that through the power of young people and new thinking about how they um, can use social media and all sorts of things has to be... The, the, um, the, the priority. Yeah, 100%. I really do believe that because, you know, social media wasn't even thought about back in the times of the march. No, if the anti's use it against us, we should be using it for us. They are using it against us. Yes, they are, Dan. But um, what uh, what that uh, sadly is that they're, they're doing is lying on lying and lying and lying and lying. One hundred percent. And. Um, and as a result, the British public are listening to Wrapping it. Up. The thing is, they've got, no, they've got nothing else to fall back on. There's no, there's no mm. other side to that story. But they punch, they're punching that much stuff out, and we're just saying, just a deal. Absolutely. Go. I think one of the most important things is, well, two key issues. Social media is the driving force um, of the, getting people to immediately think something's either good or bad um, and you know people don't go into like lengthy debates they see something and they immediately think "Ooh, they're a bad lot and I think that we have to be clever because we have to come up with very good sharp messages which are going to um, spread the word we have to and we okay I'm probably a bit long-winded in the way I put my messages out because there's always some message that needs to be got out there somehow. But I think that um, we need to um, continue every single day of the week 
as we are at the moment, through This Is Something UK, pushing positive messages out. But at the same time, we need hunts to come up with ideas and positive ideas within that, that they can do within their own communities. And then it feed it back into social media about such and such a hunt did this, such and such a hunt did that. Um, uh, and 20,000 people went to the point of point or whatever. And it, then you start spreading good news stories. And you, But you can't. We can keep doing what we can, but hunts need to now latch into it. Yeah, no, big time. Big time. Um, I can't remember the figures, um, but from a shooting perspective, I can't remember the amount of thousands a year business yeah. that is done through a shooting season when so-and-so invites so-and-so shooting, and then off the back of that, they do a business deal. Yeah. And, that's so many, and that's so many hundred jobs yeah. that's just been created. Yeah. That's without the jobs of the gangkeeper, you know, the hunt staff, the, yeah. the whatever. But I, I think it, it's as much as anything is getting right down to the basics of why a hunt is there. And, you know, it's so easy to look back at the old days and say it was Lord such and such sitting on his horse and all that. You know, we live in a multicultural, multi-talented modern society. And, and OK, um, the, the, the opposition have made it their business to absolutely castigate us. And we should be absolutely putting them on the back foot and hard. Yeah. Um, but we need young people, enthusiastic young people, um, to, to have got the necessary knowledge of um, how to deal with computer technology and and all that. Um, you know, that we need to we need to have them there backing us all the way. Yeah. And if we don't, we you know we will find ourselves. Always playing catch up, and I'm not one who wants to play catch up. No. I want to see us, you know. And we aren't people who can go on the radio who've got a good voice. Um, I, I used to have to do a lot of radio work now, uh, years ago, but uh, nowadays I'm, you know, I'm gone from that. <laughs> you know, I really regret not doing more with it, but uh, I had to do it all at virtually all the radio stations, virtually all over the country. Yeah, but I have to say, one of my favourite. Um memories of, of hunting and actually one of my was I actually that was I yeah it must have been I must have been working with the hounds at that point. I was stood I stood amongst the, the, the field talking mm. um to some of the grooms and the, the aunties came through and I thought, Oh here we go. And then, oh look at you all sat on your horses and, and make you know, you're all toffs, this, that and the other. And actually that was a slow day for us mm. and there's only about three or four masters out. Yeah. There wasn't. There's only like two masters out and three or four sub subscribers, and the rest were all grooms. And they were having a go at these girls about this and the other. And I thought, you guys can't be. If you just knew what you're saying, the actual facts here, mm -hmm. you couldn't be further from the truth. There are all people that worked, yeah, you know, for yeah. the masters, for the members of the hunt, and it was. It did make me smile. Yeah. But you know, it, a lot of the. The sort of fight against hunting is, um, you know, they don't like us as individuals, they don't like no. us as people. And, and qu quite frankly, when the, the, the Labour government banned hunting, as they did, you know, it made me cringe that, you know, we're meant to be living in an intelligent society, uh, you know, and trying to um, set the UK in, in, into a very good direction for future prosperity for the general public as a whole and we get sort of involved in such stupid 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 debate 100 percent. and yeah the, there are some hunts that actually need their bloody heads seeing to yeah you know when you makes you wonder why that what makes them tick and i have no hesitation in telling them so if i saw them why they do what they do i just do not understand but, um, you know, they are the exception to the rule. And, um, you know, they need the one, they, they need the lesson teaching to the, them. The problem is, is a lot of it, you get tired of the same bloody brush. Yeah. You know, I said that to some soldiers not so long ago when I was talking to them when I was doing the, the COVID testing. I said, look, you know, whatever you do, you've got uniform on. Yeah. So it doesn't matter we're doing something good or bad, you yeah. are tarnished with that brush because yeah. you've got uniform on. And it's the same if you're hunting, you've got a scarlet coat yeah. on. And, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. He's a huntsman. He's, he's you know yeah, that's yeah. that's them. They're, they're all they're all the same, unfortunately. Yeah. Though, 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 though we both know not all huntsmen are the same. Yeah. <laughs> I think I told you about the four generations, the three yeah. generations before me. But I've sort of um, my didn't do any mastership of the buckridge myself. So um, for any particular reason? No. Well, because I was the youngest son, you see. Right. So um, there was my great grandfather, father, great grandfather, grandfather, father, mother, and then my two brothers and sister were all masters of Puckridge. The 1947 48 season uh, was the season that my um, grand, great grandfather, grandfather, and father were all masters together. Then my mother came in in 1962 after my grandfather died. And uh, it was then, she was master for 10 seasons and sadly died very young. So um, then uh, later on, uh, my eldest brother and my uh, sister and my middle brother all joined the mastership at various times. But being the youngest son, I thought, well, five, five members of the Barclay family, <laughs> being master of one hunt would be enough for a family uh, disagreement. So I left uh, to go... Um, to the Essex and Suffolk, but before that I'd done my apprenticeship with the Heathrop and the Warwickshire and the Blackmore Vale and been out to Ireland with the North Tipperary, so it was all, you know, very much, um, I, I was going to take my own line. Yeah. And uh, that was probably much better for it. My yeah. fa father and I got on very well as a result of it because, uh, you know, he, 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 he enjoyed, the, you know, seeing I'm doing my own thing, and that was good. So having been at the Essex and Suffolk for four seasons, where one learned a tremendous lot, and was joint master with George Paul and Mary, um, uh, you know, it was, it was a real challenge and a real... What was it like working with the Pauls? Well, George was George and Mary was Mary. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, but I, luckily enough, I was... Uh, hunting the hounds myself, on a, and uh, Mary, uh, Mary was very often my field master. Uh, you you knew with Mary that uh, you had to look a bit sharp and get it right. <laughs> but uh, um, so it was, it was, you know, it was a, 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 a good a good learning curve. No doubt about that. So then from there, of course, as I say, we went to the Fitzwilliam, and uh, that you know that was a fascinating country, and that we opened up all the lot of the Fenland, which had never been hunted before, right out to places like Wisbeach, March, Chatham. Did you, did you find much when you was out in them sort of places? Well, you would look at the Fen and you wouldn't think there would be a fox for miles. Um, but there's a story which is very true. Um, the, where foxes suddenly started to appear on the Fens. And there was uh, a... a um, fox shot on Thorny Fen, uh, hadn't been the fox hadn't been seen um, down there, but one was shot, and it was laid out on a slab outside the butcher's shop in Thorny, I think it was, and the public is, came in to look at this fox to see what one looked like. Extraordinary, really. And yeah. the same happened down on the Norfolk Broads, too. Um, there was no sign of foxes down there, and they suddenly came in. And uh, it, was, um, it was, I can't remember the name of the place now, come to me in a minute, but there was a, a fox was shot and that was laid out on the slab of a butcher's shop for people to come and look at it too. And, I, you know, it is extraordinary um, how they came in. And so there's one particular part of the fence which I could take you to now, which have, won't have changed. You can look for, I should think, eight miles straight across the fence and to the right and to the left of you, there will be trees. Um, but then if you look straight down the fen, there won't be a tree for that seven or eight miles. Yeah. So I always looked to the fox as, a, as an animal that liked cover and it liked woodland and it would be, you know. Yeah. And um, that's the sort of animal. But, you know, they adapt, they, you know, food supply and all that. Uh, and it was extraordinary. You know, you would go down in these places and you would find a mass of foxes. 
and we did our job very well in keeping the balance right by taking enough, enough out. Yeah. And that's what was so important. And I would argue that all the way through, that hunting played a tremendous role in keeping the fox population right down there. Um, yeah, no, I'd agree. And it was, it, was, it was dead right. It was absolutely right. And so any anti who said you shouldn't be there and shouldn't be dealing with the fox population in that way, I knew actually by doing it that way that we were actually saving foxes from being um, um, probably killed in very many other nasty ways. Yeah, especially early on, you know, yeah. the gin traps and yeah, yeah. everything else. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it was extraordinary. But then um, after a, a wonderful s sort of 12-year session at the Fitzwilliam, we, we went to Cotswold and then... Um, we had three seasons there, and of course the two countries of its room and the Cotswold are completely different. Um, and um, I was looking after the country uh, west of the A1, which took in sort of places like Oakham, uh, out to Melton, Mowbray, and then sort of back round to Uppingham, um, back towards the Fitzwilliam border. And that was, you know, it was a, a, a tremendous challenge. We weren't there long enough, really. Um, we would have enjoyed it. But uh, it was, you know, the bit of country that I was looking after was the, gra the grass country where the ladies and gentlemen were going to enjoy their horses and jumping fences. Well, say we're adjoining hunting countries. Uh, the, the farmers in both were absolutely remarkable. They were incredible, and we we we, we got to know them all very well. And um, yeah, um, it the rapport between us all um, was such an important um, part of making sure hunting kept going. And uh, and you know, it, I look back at it with great pleasure. Um, it's probably very much more difficult now to achieve with all the modern pressures there are on. Yeah, and fa farm, farmers, especially far the farming side of things, farmers are always, I find now, a lot lot more hard work. Yeah. But I suppose that, that bit more acreage for that bit more crop or whatever else is always such a big thing for them now. Well, I think there's so much pressure on, all round. Yeah. You know, yeah, um, no, there is. Yeah, and I think that, but, um, you know, there was the yeoman farmers of Leicestershire who had farmed cattle, sheep, whatever, uh, all grass farms, and then there was the big places in the east, you know, down on the fens, which I'm talking about, where it was intensive wheat, barley, um, oil seed, rape, and sugar beet. I know. bet that was cold when you were out there, though, wasn't it? February, yeah, it February time. Well, we know we used to be on the fen February time. We were always down there September, October, yeah. and into early November, and that was it. And the end, it also started there at the end of August, but yeah. yeah. So we've been down on some of it with Essex and Suffolk, down like you know, Clacton Way or whatever else. And oh yeah, get an Easter been there. Yeah, sure. yeah. I've been yeah. sat on a quad sh shivering my ass off yeah. many a times. Yeah, yeah. Is there are there a lot of foxes down in Clacton and Fort Way now? Mm, they're, they're in places. Yeah, but it's it's it's, it's heavily shot really, I suppose. But I always said that when I was funny enough when <laughs> I was down there that, that, that hunting the hounds down there, that the foxes would always most likely be around the villages, yeah. um, tucked up around the back of the villages because they've got quite a lot of disturbance um, in the, in the, in, in the uh, winter months yeah. uh, and uh, we're, we're driven into these places at the back of, back of um, tendering, I remember, they used to come in there, you wouldn't want to be drawing covers around there because they'd get in trouble. Yeah, so. we had that. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I was going to gonna say earlier on, actually, um, when we talk about the anties and everything, their, their stuff being cut and shut, was a lot of the videos you see with, especially our lot, um, then with the using the hound, the hound, their, oh, what are they call the gizmo. Always off the main road. You never see them, they're always calling hounds to a main road, and they never, ever, you never see that. It's never ex explained on there. I think... I, I think that you cannot. That, uh, people are anti hunting come into several different categories. And I think it's very clear to me 
that um, the, the pe people who are out protesting in balaclavas and screaming and shouting abuse at people and trying to get the hands uh, away from the huntsman um, are not animal lovers. No. Full stop, they're not. And the way they behave says it all. Yeah. It absolutely says it all. And we should be jumping on the fact uh, the, the, on that every single time. And, you know, if lines are laid or foxes are flushed to a bird of prey, um, that is what is happening. Um, and that is what it, it should, it, it, you know, needs to be put across. And it needs, we do not need to be running away from the argument. We should be absolutely up front. Yeah, with taking it, it straight front, taking and, and taking the battle straight to them, and not not being polite uh, to them in any way. The facts are the facts. You mm -hmm. are wrong, and we are doing something which is legal. Yeah. If no. we, um, you know, um, get it wrong, we should be the first ones to, um, you know, apologise. Yeah, uh, 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 and make sure things are right. So, if, as you say, like uh, when the fox did the about turn for where you thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, and uh, go. Um, then you know, and it goes into the lady's garden. Well, you, you deal with it. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, and shouldn't be shy of dealing with it. No. 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 Indeed not. So hunting fits in. Yes. Very, very well to the the. the um, whole communities, rural communities, as much as it uh, did all those years ago, it does the same now. But it, obviously, we've got a lot of, of um, you know, hunts have got a lot more work to do, yeah. in, in, especially with this virus, this bloody virus is an absolute nightmare. But, you know, we've got to be on the ball and we've got to be with it. And God knows how, what, what the season's going to bring. No, I don't know. I don't know. But then... So Cotsmoor, you see, was, as I say, it was a remarkable place to be, really good, lovely pack of hands, very differently bred to the Fitzwilliam and all that. Were they old, old English there? No, the Cotsmoor were a mixture, funny enough. Um, the, well, the Fitzwilliam were modern, um, with a bit of Welsh blood in them, but mainly modern hands. With a bit of pure English in, but not a huge amount. Um, and the Cotsmoor were... A complete mixture of everything. They had Welsh in them, they had modern in them, they had American in them, they had pure English in them. Uh, so they were a league of nations, but they actually hunted beautifully. And Neil Coleman was huntsman, having taken over from Captain Fanshawe, um, and he hunted them brilliantly, you know, as did George at the Fitzwilliam. And uh, so they were, you know, they were a completely different pack of hands. I always wanted to go out with the fix with him. I, I was, I was going to go out with John with his eagle, yeah, um, and, and watch a proper eagle fly, as it were, and like my my excuse of doing it. Um, but I never, I never did get out to see his his, his bird yeah. fly. Um, but he's he's been he's done he's done very well with it. He has, yes, John has. And done very badly out of it actually, because you know he ended up in court, all yeah. of that that rigmarole and. Yes, that was a bad do. Yeah, and uh, you know, in, in, end up in trouble for doing his job, which is yeah, yeah, very wrong. Again, it was complete. Uh, you know, the facts were in front of them, what they were all trying to achieve, and everything else. And the aunties, you know, got it all. Yeah, to bend round to their way. Yeah, but they'll, have, they'll, 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 the aunties will. You know, dig into the Fitzwilliam if they possibly can, because they know who's because of who's and what's and where's. Yeah. Um, so that's a worry. But anyway, we having spent time there, and um, with Lucy having her, as I say, first very serious accident, we had to just just sort of rejig our lives a bit. So yeah. we came up to Lincolnshire, and we went from there uh, to the Southwold, where we were for a season, and then uh, unfortunately. But ill health sort of hit me at the time and heart problems, so I had to um, sort of take a bit of a breather. But um, I didn't really take a breather at all because I started farming. <laughs> we, uh, this is we, a different breather. Yeah, we had uh, we started a herd of Lincoln Red cattle and 
150 of them within no time. And we had Jacob's sheep, we had 200 of them. And, oh, and Jacob's sheep. But Jacob's and uh, Lincoln Longwalls. And then we had 150 pigs, so that was kept us moving. Yeah, yeah I should imagine so. Um, and then um, time came along and um, we set up our own meat business alongside it and all that, and it was very, very interesting. We then, uh, we hunt, yes, I hunt, we hunted with the, Grove, uh, the Burton, on the committee of the Burton, and then uh, um, the next pack I took was the Grove and Ruffett. Did I mention the Southwold? No, I didn't. Uh, Briefly, you Yeah, we had a season at the Southwold, that's it. And that had a season at the Southwold and then uh, started farming, did all that. And about seven, eight years later, uh, we went to the Grove and Ruffin, um, which was uh, uh, where we are, whose hunting country we're in now. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, yeah, and, you know, lovely pack of hounds at the Grove and Rufford. Uh, a pack of a lot of draft hounds at the South World. Um, again, all interesting times. And um, the, of course, when we came to the Grove and Rufford, the remnants of the the um, mining communities were very uh, obvious here. Yeah. Um, and of course, a lot of them, the miners, and a lot of former miners, uh, used to hunt with the Grove and Rufford. My yeah. old boss was a, um, who's he's now retired. But he was a, a keeper when I obviously when I went into keeping in Shropshire, but he was a former miner. Really? And yeah, yeah. and yeah, for, it was, I, I don't know what way you describe it really. If he was a, it was a, if he was a, if he was a full time miner or a full time poacher, I don't know which, <laughs> don't know which way that, that swung. But he used to do a lot of terriers, terrier work for the hunt, his local hunt, which was. I can't remember who said it was no, a bit further up north. Yeah. Um, he Yorkshire actually, was he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's yeah, he was full of stories. He's yeah, he'd actually written in, in um, one of the terrier books, was it? Uh, he's in Dig Deep Throw Back. Oh right. He's actually written a story in there, and that's where he had a, he'd done a twelve-hour shift in the pits, come out and took the dog for a walk, and the dog went to ground. Okay. Ended up having to dig it out. A massive fox, actually one of the biggest pictures of a fox I've ever seen. Really? Cause, yeah. Of course, there's a be. Um, a, a, lot, a lot of miners would uh, come out of the pit on a Saturday morning, and uh, they would uh, they, that, that we, that they would be off hunting, and that would be it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was yeah, and he was going to go into hunt service as terryman and yeah. countryman, but actually took on the keeper and thing instead. Really? Mm. But he'd done a lot when he retired. He, he'd done a lot, of, a lot of terrier work for the Ludlow. Oh right, yeah. and. Um, this last season, just giving it up, and he sort of just does what he wants to do, really. Well, he's always done what he wanted to do, yeah. but yeah, more so. What's his name? Do you say? His name was Steph. Yeah, yeah. He's he sort of turned up and done a bit of. But I think what we've got to do overall, and I think whether you agree or not, is keep push trying to push. The messages out, which are going to be, you know, helping yeah. hunting in the future. Yeah, and that's the reason why, you know, it was, it was. I thought it was important to try and do this podcast and try and push it, yeah. push, push, push the hunting for the for its positives, same as the keepers. Well, I think, you know, we have to now all of us, every single one of us, come together and, you know, use what we, ways we can to, um, to, to, to get the arguments across. If we don't, we'll, we, you know, we'll be letting ourselves down, really. And I think we need to, we need to get the, some real, real strength and push behind what we're doing. Yeah. All the, all the, like we said earlier on, all the organisations have got to stand, you know, united. Side side. united. Whether you whether you agree with with shooting, fishing, or hunting, when one when one falls, yeah. this can have a domino effect. And when I couldn't, when I joined um, as falconer for the Essex and Suffolk. I wasn't allowed to join the Falconry Association because I worked for the Hunt Service oh, yeah. because I didn't agree with it. We agree with it or not, yeah. that's fine. But instead of saying, "Oh, well, yeah, the hunt's taking a mick," they take, you know, using the bird of prey. What they should have done was approach the MFHA and gone, "Look, we don't really agree with this because you're sort of using it as a loophole." I, I, I know the and, and work together yeah. and come up with a suitable, you know, end. Yeah. But they're not. They've just gone two fingers. We, you yeah. know, and, and I think I think it's such a wrong approach. Yeah. 
Um, but it's but it, it comes to people's domain, doesn't it? I suppose. Well, this is this is our domain. You can't come into it. it, it it's very very sad. But I would hope that the way things are going now, that we actually do find that people do, um, actually start to change attitudes. Yeah, the attitudes got to change. Yeah, they have to. Otherwise, we're going to be in. Well, we're almost in dire straits now, really. If you stand back and look at the situation compared to what it was five, ten years ago. Yeah, yeah, we've got to, we've got to, um, you know, and I think that most people, most people um, would um, agree with that. Mm. I really do. Yeah, I really, I really and, uh, and if we don't um, go, that, go, go the right direction, you know, we're only going to have our own selves to blame. Yeah. I had to smile a few weeks ago. My window cleaner yeah. is uh, an anti, but he fishes. Oh, so we get that. So I went, all right then. I said, what about this then? And I sort of reeled a few things off to him to the point where I think he left mine thinking I might give up fishing, which wasn't quite my, <laughs> wasn't quite my <laughs> <laughs> intention, but trying to make him see the whole picture. Yeah. Um, and I just thought, but I said to him, I said, when, when hunting goes, shooting's going to go, what's after shooting? He went, well, I'll be it. I went, no, no. Fishing's fishing next. talk about the bird of prey. Yep. And the falconer is the same. Has he got tick there? Yeah, he's got tick there. Yeah. I'll get him. We'll calm him down. I'll get him in a minute. Um, so, um, yes, I remember hunting with Fitz, with Fitz William one day. We were going alongside a lake, old gravel pit, and there was a chap hauling in this pike. And he was making out of it and we sat there with our hands and watched him. He said, fuck off, fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, he was getting more and more angry with us. He said, you barbaric bastards, piss off. And then he was giving this bloody... Pike some good news. Oh, dear. I don't yeah. Know. I don't know. Oh, you're not going to let me pull that now, are you, monkey? Uh, no, and, it's, 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 and I said to him, my, my, my closest statement was to him, what do you think is going to happen once hunting yeah. and shooting has gone? Yeah. He said, well, that'll be it. I went, that won't be it. Yeah. To hundred percent, and it, we're seeing it now. We're yeah. seeing it now. We're definitely seeing it now. Um, and you know, if if they don't, if you don't like an activity, keep away from it. You don't yeah. have to. But there's I, so much good. There's so much good that comes from it. You know, absolutely. we're saying on the phone. You know, yeah. about the, the hunt staff laying covers. Yeah, woodland management. You know, balance of the species when hunting was legal. Balance of the species. You know, understanding the farming community. It's a, it's a myri- myri- myriad of different things that come together. Yeah. Um, that, uh, and, you know, I find we used to do a lot with the schools. There's no doubt about it. We used to do a huge amount with the schools. And we used to get, you know, there was no, no real antagonism towards us. No. If we, got, if we got our message tuned in and done properly, you know. Yeah. Yes, the thing is not to rise to them. Let them have the same. Go, yeah, yeah, okay, I hear yeah. you. Yeah. Now just listen to this. Yeah. And that's what that's exactly what I've been trying. I'm trying to do yeah. with this. It's a yeah. case of if you want to be an anti, be an anti. I've got no yeah. no problems with it. Yeah. But at least understand why. Yeah. Okay. So once we gave up the hunting uh, world, or not gave up the hunting world, but finished, and then. Uh, uh, we, um, poor old Lucy had several more accidents, which uh, were um, very difficult for, yeah. for the family as a whole. Um, we um, then, um, I've I developed over the year, I've got it. Yep. Well done, well done. Big one. Yep. Oh, that's the thing, don't they? Yep, I dropped it. Potch, come here, Potch. Squeeze. There we go. It's dead. Yuck. Bloody horrible things, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Dad has a lot of problems with it, at sounding them in the park. Oh, he often... Riddle, riddle with ticks there. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Um, and this probably because we've got a bit, a bit of bracken up here. But that's yeah. probably... Um, so, um, I picked up a camera and started photographing hounds and enjoying that. And then... Um, basically um, got fascinated in taking wildlife photographs and videos and 
all that and uh, have continued to do that for the last eight, ten years. Mm. Uh, got some tre- uh, been very lucky, um, more luck than judgment, I think. That's it, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's having it's, patience, I think, yeah. as much as anything. Sitting there and waiting and waiting and waiting. Um, so I've got some great pictures of foxes, hare, deer, hares, deer, oyster catchers and curlews and um, green shanks and all sorts of things, you know, so it's been... Um, been a great opportunity. To, I've to threatened to get. Um, there's a company now called Eagle. It, might, it lose me. Eagle something. Like that. And they do adapters. So for like for like my um, telescope, yeah. I can get a thing that goes on the end of it. Yeah. And I can put my telephone on the back of it and use it as, so I can take pictures off my phone through the lens. Oh really? And I've been threatening for the last six months to get one to have a go. Yeah. And I haven't yet. Yeah. But I must do because it's you miss. I miss so much. Yeah, you will. Yeah, um, yeah. You, can, you know, it's not the same. But I love it, and I've got back into it. I fell out of love with the countryside big time. Did after you? yeah, when I left hunt service, I sort of I went back to a bit of part time keepering, yeah. and didn't enjoy. Where it. were you in hunt service then? So uh, just Essex and Suffolk. Oh, just, it was just me, Essex and Suffolk. Yeah. Um, I left there and went to work at Langham Hall. All oh, right. Yeah. And done the part time keepering there. Yeah. And just the stress of it all got to me. Yeah. Because I, I was in the gardens as well. I couldn't do things that I wanted to do yeah. them and, and whatnot. And it all got properly on top of me. And yeah. I just fell out of love with the countryside completely. And that's why I've given the eagle up this year. Really? Yeah. yeah. I'm just, just got no love. Not that I've got no love for flying the eagle. I've got no love for, the, for doing it yeah. for somebody else. Yeah. And, um, and then I've, I picked the... I picked the, uh, the um, well, it was a podcast thing that sort of started me off a little bit. Well... The podcast idea has been going in my brain for the last six, six, seven months before it actually happened, but sort of ticking over. And then I sort of, talking about this and going to go through to do it, I actually picked up my love for the countryside yeah. again yeah. along the way. And in the last season, I was going out with the hounds on a push bike and just enjoying yeah. it, yeah. watching hounds work, yeah. which yeah. was a bit I enjoyed yeah, absolutely. and stopped enjoying because yeah. I wasn't getting to do it. Um, and I found the love for, love for it again. But probably lost the love for it. Just, mm-hmm. Yeah, could have could have moved to London and lived in the, in the in the city and not worried about it. Yeah. Um, but that comes through. Just you know being abused a bit, doesn't it? I suppose yeah. in, in work yeah. and everything else. Yeah. And putting a lot of pressure on myself. Oh, you you you, you know if you, the more pressure you put on yourself, the more difficult it is to, uh, yeah. you know, um, achieve what you want to in the end. There's no doubt about that. Mm. So. I better say thank you very much because you've got a table to go and. Uh, Are you happy with that? Yeah, I am very happy with that. Thank you. And then, if, you know, the, the, uh, we can do more of the photography side. Yeah, yeah. No, oh. uh, if I.